Hello, my name is Russell Singer with the Avaya Serviceability Engineering Team. And this video will demonstrate how to schedule a meeting through the RadVision Release 8 iView User Portal. Now, if you're an administrator for the iView or the RadVision solution, you may already be familiar with this screen that you see here, which is the iView Management status page that you would normally see when you log into the iView suite. However, this interface does not give you the ability to schedule or manage any of the meetings for your RadVision solution. Now what you want to do is simply change the URL to point to the user portal rather than the iView management suite. So what I'll do is go up to the address bar of my browser and I will simply point to the IP address of my iView server and the port that iView is running on is 8080. So what I need to do is put in the IP address and then a colon and the port number 8080. Now I don't want to specify any other parameters here for the URL. So after I enter the IP address colon 8080 and hit enter, you'll notice that this takes me to the Scopia user portal. And this is where I want to be if I'm going to schedule or manage any of the meetings for my RadVision solution. Now if your IT department has given you a user account to access this user portal, this is where you would enter that information. If you're the administrator, you can use the same login that you use to log into the iView management suite here on the user portal. So that's what I'm going to do. Now once I'm logged in, I would see a list of existing meetings that I have access to manage. In my case, I have no scheduled meetings, so I do not see any in the list. But you'll notice I have the option to select the schedule button which will let me create a new meeting. So I'll show you how that works. Now once I click Schedule, I get a pop-up window that looks very similar to what you might expect in an email. I have a field that says To. What that allows me to do is enter any of the email addresses for people I want to invite to this meeting or notify of this meeting. However, that is not a required field, so you can actually leave the To field blank. This meeting will still be scheduled and work properly, it's just that no one would be notified ahead of time of this meeting taking place. In the subject field is where you would enter the subject of the meeting, and that is actually required. You would also want to enter the start time and the duration. Now you'll notice you can type here a message. Again, that would be something that's included with the email sent to any of the users, but it's not necessarily required to schedule a meeting. Now what I'm going to show you is the where option, which is the one on the right there. Basically what this lets you do is choose the meeting service that you would like to use. Uh, you can choose a service that's already been defined in an MCU. You can also choose to use a user's virtual room. So you notice by default it's set up to use the meeting type of 71, which is my default service. I can specify a meeting ID here if I wanted to, or I could just let it auto-generate a random meeting ID. I could also choose to use my virtual room if I wanted to. Now the next thing we're going to do is click on the Endpoints tab. What this does is allow you to assign specific endpoints to be included in this meeting. And what will happen is the MCU will automatically dial these participants once the meeting begins. So you notice I only have one endpoint in my network right now that I can actually assign to this meeting. So I'll go ahead and do that. I'll select that XT1000 series unit and we'll select to invite that endpoint. Now once this endpoint shows up in the list on the right, what that means is the endpoint will automatically be dialed by the MCU once this meeting is scheduled to begin. But let's say I wanted to invite another endpoint or uh, another device out of my network that perhaps was not a RadVision endpoint, or if it was a RadVision endpoint, it's not registered to iView. I can click the Buy Address button and this gives me the option to specify even an IP address for an endpoint that I would like to have invited to this meeting. So this would allow you to invite even third-party endpoints to a RadVision Scopia meeting. Now on the Availability tab, what you can see is the availability of each endpoint that's being invited to this meeting, as well as the MCU that it will be hosted on. And then finally on the Advanced tab, you have some other options that you can set for this scheduled meeting, such as the moderator and meeting PIN numbers. You can also select who will be the meeting host out of the list of endpoints there. And you can specify some bandwidth settings as well as the video layout of the meeting room for the various participants. Well, once you're done specifying any of these advanced settings, you are now ready to save this scheduled meeting. 
and you do that by selecting the send button. Again, if you'd had any email addresses specified in the to line, this would actually send the meeting details to those email addresses. But since we don't, all this does is save the scheduled meeting. And now the MCU will automatically dial these endpoints out at the spe specified time. Thank you for your time today. We welcome your comments, questions, and feedback at mentor at avaya.com or on Twitter at Avaya Mentor. For more details or related information, please visit support.avaya.com. Thank you for choosing Avaya.